Man. Uh, this just in the legendary Green Ranger, White Ranger, actor, martial artist, father. We've lost Jason David Frank. JDF. Ah, uh, goddamn. My boy Davey just texted me moments before I hit record here. And I am quite at a loss here. Damn. And I was just trying to get mentally prepped for, for this, so... Welcome to an episode of Rated G. I'm your host, G. Derado. For those of you who are tuning in here for the first time, welcome to the show. Generally, this is a podcast revolving all things art and creativity, as well as uh, other interests that I have. Um, and I often feature local artists, creators, uh, creative entrepreneurs, and while promoting them, I try to get to know them through honest discussions and conversations about uh, all things in life. So, if you enjoy this content, you uh, want and you want to support the podcast, uh, support my YouTube channel, which contains other uh, art content. Uh, please like, subscribe. Uh, ring that notification bell that way you can keep up with the uploads and be sure to check out the show notes if you'd like to support my art in general and follow me on social media i always provide my link tree in the show descriptions um, you can so you can check that out and for everyone else who is tuning back in thank you for your continued support um so yeah um what is the best word uh i'm just taken aback by this awful recent news that i just happened to find out and just to be real transparent here um it is sunday it is sunday the 20th november 20th uh normally i never i usually don't record on Sundays. That's like one of my main rules for the podcast is that I don't record on Sundays. Occasionally, I would record on Saturday afternoons uh, in, uh, if, with a guest if necessary. But I really try to keep that one rule of not recording on Sundays so that I have time to edit and have everything ready for the week. Yada, yada, yada. Um but the recording for this week's episode has been a real challenge. Uh, this is the third day attempt. I've had, you know, I've I, I had an episode it, like right in the beginning stages of of editing, where I just did not. I just came to. Uh, to terms that I what I did not feel good about putting out like this kind of quality of content, so I I scrapped it twice, <laughs> one yesterday, and the day before, or actually not yesterday. Yesterday was Saturday, so I was sitting on this episode for for a moment, but Friday I scrapped it. And then Thursday, I had an uh, I had an episode recorded from Wednesday, and I scrapped that. So this is a yeah, this is the hardest one to record, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of factors into it, a lot and a lot of feelings too. I've been just I don't know what happened. Maybe just things finally kind of just caved in in terms of. Uh, how well the podcast is doing 
um, how much engagement. You know, this is also the, the longest run I've done with solo episodes. So, and um, it's taken a lot of practice and a lot of even just a lot of recordings of me getting comfortable doing solo episodes, even though I do them. But, uh, you know, majority of the time, like I'm I'm not very confident with a lot of them, but I was just starting to get confident. And I don't know, it kind of just started crumbling Tumbling down a little bit. And uh, I don't know if that's the burnout because I've always I've, I've mentioned burnout in the past or or what. But and also the way I've been handling the, the recent episodes, they've been more topical. And um, I've been using this platform as my own talk therapy. <laughs> and my uh, I use this platform to go on my own tangents uh rants uh, about anything or you know whatever um news maybe that pe- that piques my interest and I just kind of want to put my two cents on the matter and I try to keep it related to art in some form so or anything or anything that would affect sort of the art community, the creative community, uh, artists like myself. Um, so, yeah. And then this episode I really I was that I was going to put out is revolving around MMA because I've expressed many times uh, my my love and appreciation for mixed martial arts particularly UFC it's the main promotion that I follow but I try to keep I try to catch uh, other fight um highlights from other promotions and other combat sports but I really mainly follow UFC and I really admire these these athletes so I was going to do an episode kind of delving into that a little bit more and for some reason, when I would record them, even when I thought I had it in the bag, I just did not feel full, like 100% confident with it. So here we are, third time. And uh, and then now I hear this terrible news about Jason David Frank, the original Green Ranger from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers franchise. Who uh, they they're saying right for for right now, they don't know a hundred percent yet, right? This is just breaking news that they're saying that uh, it it was a suicide, which is really heartbreaking, man. Because uh, you know he's he has a daughter. Apparently, he was uh uh. Close sources are are saying that he was going through a divorce. And yeah, it's just, it's it's wild. Like I'm, like I I got to meet him at one of the uh, Wizard World conventions in Philadelphia. And this was years ago. I was still fat. I have a picture to prove it. It was a, me, me and my wife, Nicole, we were just dating then. This is when we were still in college and we were both overweight. So she's not, she won't be thrilled that I put this picture out there, especially on YouTube. But I got, I have to share this memory of when we got to meet him and got a picture with him. I got a signed photo of him framed. Uh, and yeah, man, I, I really looked up to him uh, uh, during those days, especially during um, early stages of when I was losing weight. Um, you know, he was just such a positive uh, influence and, a, and very inspirational, motivational and on just, you know, following your dreams and trying to reach your goals and 
you know, just have have a fulfilled life. And he just, you know, he was always he was an advocate of like hardships and and overcoming adversity. And, you know, if this is if the suicide claim is true, uh, you know, what a what a what a tragedy, you know, truly, because because he was like a beacon of hope and um you know it's just it's it's that's really sad i'm <laughs> really bummed out and i didn't want i, I didn't want to put out a, a podcast making it like all just this vibe right here man like right now in this room it just the energy right now is just it's so quiet it's heavy rest in peace man my deepest condolences to your daughter uh and yeah, I don't know. We'll find out more. And this is, this is truly, this is a hard time, honestly, because we recently lost Kevin Conroy, legendary voice actor for Batman, uh, the animated series, and the Dark Knight game franchise. He he reprised his role as the Dark Knight on so many, you know, uh, so many projects whether it's for the animation series, the video games, or just, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, it's really, really tough time. <laughs> Especially for 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 people around my age and, and older. Uh, this is hard. We're seeing all the goats. We're seeing all these legends, you know, passing. <laughs> and don't get me wrong there's, i know there's a lot of great new talent out there coming out right now or who, who are killing it right now but yeah we're just you know we're seeing all the legends truly passing in this sad times <laughs> fuck <laughs> uh i laugh just by the way i i laugh like that i that's my coping mechanism. So I'm just putting that out there for people who are not familiar with me personally. That is a p coping mechanism. I got, I have to laugh it off. The only way to survive, <laughs> right? I'm sure a lot of people that have stressful jobs and when they're going through some crazy times and they just, they got to smile. Otherwise they're going to fucking lose their shit. <laughs> right. I think we all we all vibe with that. We all resonate with that. But yeah, god damn. God damn. So, yeah, I want I kind of want to stay transparent here with with you guys. Um you know, I I really had a lot of mixed feelings going into this recording. I contemplated whether i was just not going to have an episode come out this week because we are days away from thanksgiving and i i felt indifferent about like putting out an episode the week of because truly honestly like who the fuck is gonna listen to this this is a very low budget uh low profile podcast so you know just judging by the numbers you know, I'm fully aware of right now the how many people tune into the podcast, uh, especially these solo episodes, which is like, again, going back to, uh, you know, I've been doing this sort of for me. It's it's a talk therapy. It's therapeutic. Also, it gives the opportunity for uh, new audience members to get to know me a little bit more. But, you know, doing that in all in that in the hopes of being able to to accomplish that, you know, I'm only reaching a couple people, <laughs> right? The these long form 
Um, podcasts can really only reach so many people. And if I only get a couple of views, that could just be from the same person. But I don't want to be all doom and gloom. I don't want to be, uh, what's the word? Pessimistic? Is that it? Um, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's got to keep the ball rolling. Uh, but yeah, I had had a lot of mixed feelings about going into this, and you know, whether or not if I wanted to do an episode, ba- like that's a little more based on MMA, because I wasn't just gonna go on a rant about why I love MMA. Uh, there's there's a lot of interesting things going on in the MMA community in terms of uh involving involving meta and just beyond MMA uh leagues like there are some wild MMA leagues out there uh mostly in Russia I think <laughs> but uh these crazy leagues that are out there right now and I don't know I thought I'd it, I thought it'd be fun to to bring them to light because <laughs> I'm certainly seeing them in my algorithm now. And uh, it's, it's wild. There are so many leagues. I just never, I was never aware. Um. So yeah, so there, there, there's that. And I don't know. I guess I'll just try to keep this short. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'll play it by ear. <laughs> I'm like in a weird vibe right now because, like, I'm just I'm still processing JDF's passing. You know, don't get me wrong. Kevin Conroy was hard too, but. Um, I guess the way I looked up to JDF is why I'm affected so much. So got a real, I, I hope whoever is tuning in, I hope you can give me a pass on, on my vibe here, my mood, try to keep things light and amusing, but this is, uh, this is rough. This is rough. I'm just like really trying to get through this podcast at this point. Um, and it, this is wild because he, he isn't, uh, he's a mixed martial artist too. And, you know, he is part of, he was part of the, the sport that I, I truly do love, honestly. Um, I mean, I guess I can kind of just keep rolling with that. Uh, after you know, after you know, with his career being, you know, a Power Ranger, I guess. Uh, I mean, don't quote me on this, uh, because I know he has, he has like my more my Mighty Morphin Life series. Uh, you can find a lot of like his backstories, like from his pages. But uh, from my understanding, from what I've seen over the course over the years, is after he, because he like kind of fell off for a minute, um, before like he his acting really start picking picking up. Uh, he did. He actually competed in MMA. I forget which league. But it was another it was another cage fighting promotion. And uh yeah, I remember he would walk out in his Green Ranger theme song and um and he won. I believe he I for, I don't know which round, but he won by submission. And it was awesome to see because you know you, you watch power, you know, after watching Power Rangers growing up. Like you wonder, like how legit are these, uh, you know, are these actors, you know, like some of them you can tell they know martial arts, just judging by their form and technique, um, if it's just acting 
martial arts or if it's like true martial arts, like who was a true student of, of martial arts. And JDF was, was absolutely a, a student of the arts and, you know, he can, he did competitions and tournaments and all that. Um, demos, uh, so it was really cool to see him kind of shine as an MMA fighter. I don't know his actual MMA like fight record. Perhaps I could look. I don't even want to look up anything, honestly, because I'm just going to think about his his passing, man. Um, but yeah, he, you know, he actually did some MMA fighting. And then he started really on it. In my, I, my opinion, he really started blowing up when he started doing uh, film projects with uh, Bat in the Sun. And man, it's what a shame. What a shame. Um, but going into sort of my one of my initial points for the pot for this episode is my my appreciation for mma as a as an art form truly because there's 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 a beauty in when you can when you watch a fight and you sort of separate your separate yourself from you know the violence aspect of it and the blood and all that if you can sort of ignore that and truly watch watch the this competitive back and forth between two martial artists S- just seeing how they work how they put together their strikes and uh, and all and mixing uh, other forms of martial arts so not just uh, karate boxing kickboxing wrestling Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, Haikido, like all of that, like all these techniques, how they put them together to you know to win the fight. It's truly amazing, honestly. That's truly why I follow the sport, and I really wish I had the capacity to follow all the other promotions because you have one championship, which is a, a crazy sport right now. That's uh now airing on Amazon Prime. Uh, then there's uh what else? Um Bellator, uh one uh, FC, uh EFC, uh Pride, like the Cage Warriors, there's so many other uh fight promotions that have some real crazy talent. Um, but again, going back to the martial arts, watching each fighter, the way they put things together, there's something real. There's a, there's a, something I admire creatively in that. Um, and I mean, that's why you call it a martial arts really. Um, but also I, I find a lot of admiration in in the fighters themselves because when you hear some of their crazy backstories prior to getting into fighting or what led them to fighting uh, it is truly amazing and, and inspirational. And, you know, especially those who, who find their way climbing to the belt or have reached that peak our champ, like the current champions right now, like uh, for instance, Francis Ngannou and in, uh, UFC, the heavyweight champion, his his story is so fucking crazy. You can catch it on Joe Rogan's podcast. It's it's truly amazing. Um, and you know he's just one of the 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 examples of that. Um, I also admire the way fighters handle a loss as well as well as a as a victory some of them when when even like top tier high level fighters get humbled um it's it's truly inspirational to to see how well they handle a loss after just you know 
dominating for for how however long and um to see how when when they finally fall see how how they get back up and just deal with everything and uh, not even just dealing with the loss but appreciating life and what they have like they it's it's you know un, again another in, you know inspirational thing to see uh a valuable thing to see is is the gratitude the level of gratitude that they have after a loss um so that's why i personally enjoy the the combat sport um i try to take little peeks at you know the boxing league and some of that um because there's a lot of mma fighters that are transitioning to boxing or vice versa there's a lot of that so it's it's interesting time right now in in, in this sports world um but yeah i wanted to express that and then tie into uh you know mentioning ufc you know now they're partnering up with meta uh by having uh i don't know if it's going to be like new fights or just older fights that they they air on um uh there's a, a fight pass which i guess you can you can you get a free pass to watch you know old fights or cur- um recent fights and i believe uh with this partnership they're going to broadcast mma events i guess yeah from the past or or recent and you can watch them in vr so that it gives you the 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 experience the live experience so uh there's a clip you're literally in the crowd you can look side to side and you're you're literally octagon side your cage side and you get to see the fight and it's like right there in your face it's pretty cool i'll admit i'm not really big into vr i've talked it i've talked about it briefly in, in a older episode but uh yeah i'm not well versed in the vr world so i've only had very little experience with it but it is like very effective whatever when when i I played like a boxing game with it once and i was very much in it like i was playing like i was really fucking fighting and i I broke a heavy sweat i can see how it could help people lose weight in that man in that man (laughs) in that man in that in that matter uh or manner fuck i don't know what i meant initially but anyway in that situation i I can see how it could be very useful as a tool to you know get some exercise in um but yeah uh so i i think it i think it's a cool idea and if yeah i guess for people who are really into vr and and prefer that way of of get of entertainment yeah maybe check this out look into it um but personally uh maybe i'm just you know i don't know just I I just I prefer watching it the way I watch it now because I I do enjoy seeing other angles of the fight. I think that's you know I don't know if there's gonna be a way of of um so sort of like I don't want to say fixing that for for the VR uh, audience um because you will only get that angle right again you're it's simulating like as if you're and you're in the event you're you're there um yeah you're not going to be able to see you know cer- certain angles a lot of angles and yeah i like i like having multi cam views of, of the fight and you know being able to see the reaction of the fighters and seeing like cuz you know all of that matters on on like in terms of like the storytelling of the fight um so yeah that's that's like my only uh i guess criticism for the for for that ufc partnering with meta is um not being able to see all the angles so and i do i think yeah i think you can still hear the broadcasting the commentary of the fight so you get to hear that too so it's really just 
covering all the angles of the fight. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's not going to be able to do all that. But again, I mean, the, the the footage that's out there now, it's that's just a test run, I believe. So we shall wait and see. I mean, that might that might be a thing that pulls me into the VR. I don't, who knows? Who knows? I may be pushing back a little bit now, but you know, it could always be uh, encouraged to change my mind. But I, I really want to get into the other, these other branches, uh, or or rather spinoffs of of the MMA leagues, because some of the shit is crazy. Um, I did build I I built up quite a list, so <laughs> I'm gonna try not to spend too much time on each one. I'm just gonna try to I will show clips so. If you're just listening, uh, maybe maybe uh, keep your eye out on on clips on my social media or on YouTube. Maybe subscribe then so you can catch the visuals. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll share the clips and I'll try not to again get too much into explaining each sport because I truly. Don't know all the details and the rules of each thing. I, I'll just describe what you see at this point. Uh, and it's it's pretty wild. Um, so actually, this is a nice uh, another like segue into this because Dana White is now, uh, I guess he is now involved with this league called power slap um i guess i guess it's gonna start airing on espn or espn plus but now because i've seen videos from like other leagues i just don't know if it was under power slap or power slap is a new league um but i've always seen these matches he's like these slap matches where you basically got to knock your opponent out by slapping them across across the face, which is like you're 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 agreeing to CTE and brain damage at this point. Like, why do you want to inflict that on yourself? Do you not chair? Do you not? Uh, <laughs> do you not value uh, like longevity of of life, or is it just you're just going to ride this. It's all about the ride. And if your life ends after getting slapped across the face, so be it. But anyway, yeah, there's this uh, like new promotion called Power Slap. And hey, I'm not going to lie. It looks very entertaining all right, from what I've seen. And uh. Yeah, it's 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 plain and simple. You got two opponents uh sit across it, and they got like that um I think well let me just double check. But they're standing across from each other and it's like they they hold on to this like foam like like bar or handle thing, I guess just to prevent themselves from uh wanting to block the slap or flinching or any of that. So they like have their hands behind their backs, holding on to this foam. Like it looks like a nunchuck, but uh, they got to just take the slap in the face. And uh, <laughs> that, that's about it. <laughs> it's wild. Uh, so yeah, that's like this new thing that's coming out. So there, there's that. Uh, I, I should mention right now, there's this, tw- there's 11 more of these I'm going to go over. <laughs> this shit's wild. So there's that. Next, you have the uh, triple threat match. It's basically as, as, as it is, as three fighters, they fucking just got to fight each other. And I honestly think it's, you're, you're asking, un- <laughs> Depend. I mean, depending on on who you're fighting, but you're asking for a two on one. I feel like 
because there's two ways you can go about this, right? And I'm just speaking, uh, like if I was in this situation, there's all there's only there's two ways you can go about it. Is that you strike one and then the other guy or gal, or you strike two of your opponents at the same time. Either way, I feel like you're going to ask for both of them to go at you. <laughs> right? Unless if you go one and one, the, the second person, the second opponent, opponent is going to kind of wait, is going to let you fight that out. But I, I just, I, I feel like uh, you're, you're asking for immediate double team, which leads me into the next one. Two on one. So you're getting double teamed. You're basically getting bullied at this point. And uh, I remember seeing this video clip a lot, especially around Halloween, where you got Spider Man fighting Batman and Robin. And I think he actually does pretty well. He kind of knows what he's doing. Kind of. But uh, yes, yeah, so there's that. And there's like. There's crazier shit out there, let me tell you. Uh, in terms of dressing up, like I've seen some wild shit. Uh, then you got your team matches. So it can be like a two on two where it, that it's been handled at two, two on two simultaneously, or it's like a tag match or who, you know, whoever, if the, that guy gets knocked out or submitted, then. His partner has to take care of the the, the two the two fighters, uh, or it goes up to three three on three or up to five on five. There's this crazy video where in Russia where it's like just two groups, two like two massive groups of people just charging in and just fucking duking it out, which like I mean that's entertaining, but again is like like. Being uh, the the person partaking in that, I don't I don't know. It's like what what's the uh, what is the reward there? I wonder. Um, then uh, it gets it gets even more creative. Now they have this sport called Ultimate Bowl, which is basically like rugby with MMA, and you got two two small teams. It's in an octagon cage. And on two sides, two ends, you have like a net. So they they do have a ball. Basically, it's like a rugby ball. And they got to score. They either got to score or just eliminate all, um, the opposing team members <laughs> with MMA. And I feel like at that point, I won't even focus on scoring with the ball. I'm just going to fight. Or you might have the guy who can fight maybe – Maybe I don't, and also, hey, I mean, guy, maybe a girl. I don't know if there's a female, uh, you know, female league. But let's say, it, you know, let's just say with the guys, if they have a fighter, you know, knows how to take care of themselves, they might just want to avoid the fighting and just score. Maybe there's that. I don't know. I never actually watched the full game. Okay. This is just shit I've seen in videos regardless it's wild so you got that <laughs> it gets it gets kind of even more uh creative and crazier now you got this other league called the hip show and it's arena combat where you got this kind of like obstacle course thing it's kind of like parkour type of situation but you got these two teams uh, of two and they got they just duke it out while going through this course. So I guess you either score by completing the course or eliminating the opposing team. So it's almost like parkour, but with fighting. Imagine like any of those uh, action sequences in, in in like in films where you got like you know the chase scenes and they gotta fight. Like it's kind of like that, I guess, but in, in a more in a sport setting so there's that then <laughs> this you got the arm wrestling mma which you're you're asking for 
uh, again, just like the injuries because they they look pretty, they look pretty wild. Like I, there's there's a clip of this dude doing like this cra- crazy arm bar attempt over, you know the um, the arm wrestling uh, table, and I'm just thinking, oh, the guy's fucking the nerve damage, joint damage, muscle tears, all that. I'm just that's all going through my head when I see the clip. It's just, Fuck man, like, and not even that. While you're trying to arm wrestle, your the your opponent's trying to beat the shit out of you and and try to pull off these sub- submissions on you. <laughs> like, fuck, dude. <laughs> just the fact that that like that league exists, and not even just that league. The uh, Karjitsu League. <laughs> Oh, what a what a sport that one is. Shit. So Karjitsu is it's a it's a it's it's a jujitsu match that happens inside a vehicle. Now I guess uh I believe you can have a choice of starting in the front seat or in the back seat, or uh, maybe they might just start in the in the front seat always and they work their way back into the back seat, but they're always fastened. They got their seat belts fastened. And you would see if you see these clips, like they use they'll they'll use it as a tool, the, the seat belt. They'll use it for like chokeholds and shit. Or, or just like, you know, it's kind of like um when when uh I, I don't practice jujitsu, but there is a type where you can do gi or no gi. So I imagine they would utilize the seat belt as if it's like as if you're doing jujitsu with with gi, um, but the shit's pretty fucking wild, man. <laughs> so the, the it's like imagine uh, I can only imagine this, like the the skill set for this would apply to if you're in a car and someone try jumps in, like a stranger jumps in a car with you and tries to either kick you out, rob you, or whatever, but you just use your car jitsu yeah, car jitsu skills on them and be like nah bitch i'm keeping my ride right so but it you know not even just car jitsu you have car mma where in this league it's uh, i believe it's typically you're in a convertible so there's no rooftop and it's two fighters going at it just beating the shit out of each other in the in the front seat and why I don't know. <laughs> like why does this leak like again i i guess like like i can i would only say the skill set used for for either of these two sports car jitsu or car mma is being able to defend yourself or a loved one if someone was to jump in the car with you and try to rob you, right? But doing it as a league, like, I don't know, man. That shit's so fucking weird. <laughs> and and this clip that I have, it, it's, yeah, these two guys in MMA gear in, in the front seat of a convertible. And, I mean, honestly, if you're in the passenger seat, you're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked if your opponent gets on the top position because yeah, you, you, you'll, you'll see what happens. (laughs) Fucking you both pop out of the fucking car. Um, but yeah, that's, so there's, there's that. And moving on, you have the, uh, phone booth MMA. Now this one's pretty fucking crazy. I mean, I've been saying that, but this one is wild. If you watch this clip, I don't even know what, like, I wouldn't even call it MMA. I would just call it phone booth boxing because when you're in the phone booth, that's all you can fucking do. You box. You're in the phone booth. That's why there's that phrase. When you're in the phone booth, you just duke it out inside fighting. So that's basically what this sport is. And it's just two opponents going, banging, throwing fucking hammers at each other till one gets knocked out and in this clip you just see the, the the dude gets knocked out like a couple of times but he just comes to and tries to fight back and then just gets knocked out again and 
it, it, damn again like this is like crazy you're, you're it's like cte brain damage induced <laughs> oh man um all right now this gets even wilder so i know i keep saying the shit's crazy blah blah, blah but this one is pretty wild all right this one this league is called gun games and it's basically like SWAT drills with MMA and they it's and it's kind of like this like heavy duty like paint pellets uh not even like paint pellets they're just like these pellets it's like uh so it just gives the simulation and almost that realistic feeling of when you're getting shot cuz i believe it they leave marks so that is like one. I think the one of the ways you could win a match is by eliminating everybody. Through, uh, um, I guess submitting or knocking out your opponent, or um, seeing like the, I think they get like a uh, a shot a count of like how many shots you've you know you have something like that. But either way, the setup the, the when you see how how it's going down the shit looks fucking wild it's like terran tactical with like the fucking swat gear and then you throw in the the mma in there it's like fuck dude like it's like some john wick type of shit so that that one is definitely wild just all the just all the possibilities all the options you have is just like you know it's wild um and then lastly I saved this one for last because this one just seems like the most fun in terms of imagination because it, uh, I don't know. I, th I think we've all kind of like wondered what it would be like fighting in medieval armor because we have the medieval MMA league and that's exactly what they do is uh, these fighters are in like night gear medieval gear they got the shield and sword and they just like duke it out in this uh in this ring and uh yeah man it's crazy i never really imagined ground and pound with with the shield but i'm like yeah that would be like a very useful skill to have if you were if you were a knight right uh especially in all those battles and wars like when it comes to like sword fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat like that's probably the thing they would do is just fucking ground and pound with a shield um so i imagine that would probably be like one of the most entertaining uh, uh parts of of a of a fight in in medieval mma is watching the ground and pound with the <laughs> with the shield although man that shit uh that shit i can't even imagine i can't imagine what that feels like how unpleasant that feels like um but they, it's it's wild because it's pretty big in in Europe. They 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 even do like mass massive groups uh, of, of these matches or tournaments, whatever you want to call them. So I mean, in a way, it's like uh, I mean, it's like realistic role play almost. Or I mean, I feel like you could you could go into a match like that. Like just to lighten things up a little bit. It's like, yeah, I'm like fucking, you know, King Arthur about to go in. I don't know. <laughs> that was the only thing I could think of at, at this moment. But I, I thought that one was the most entertaining, at least visually. Like just watching two knights go at it. That's pretty cool. Like that's it's it's more realistic than medieval times. Right? Medieval times, it's what more it's choreographed. But this one, it's like you're watching like two guys really go at it, trying to knock each other out. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh there, that's 12 crazy ass MMA spin-offs that that are existing right now as I speak. Um I, and that's all I can tell you. I don't know where you can find, where you can watch these. I'm, I mean, you can just go on Google or just on YouTube and Google one of these types of matches and you'll get to see a highlight or even a full match. There's definitely full matches. I did a little bit of homework 
so I can get some content. And they do have like full matches of these things. And again, it's just like I can only imagine the conversations, the the, the discussions, um, alluding to like, hey, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna turn this into a league. This is gonna be a legit league. Yes, you are going to do be Brazilian Jiu Jitsu inside a car, like, <laughs> or you're gonna fight as a knight, or we're gonna go through this like, you know, tactical drill with with um these firearms that are that that shoot like these pellets, but be wary because there is MMA included in these things. It's just like. What are these discussions like? <laughs> Whew, if anyone tuning in knows anything about these leagues, <coughs> please leave a comment. I would love to hear. I would love to hear more about it. Uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> that's all I got for you. And for for a, a plethora of reasons, I don't. I don't know why this was such a hard one to really put out there to to really just seal the deal, edit, export, share, publish. I don't know why this one was the most difficult to to put out. Um, like I and I've had like other other ways of repro- approaching this episode too. I, I I actually had like I was gonna actually have a bit. I was going to start off with a bit and I'll just blame it on laziness or just the lack of commitment, but I didn't think it was going to work. I don't want to uh, spoil it either because I might save it for another time. Um, I think just as of right now, there's so much, there's a lot, there's so, so much mixed emotions going on right now, especially because of the recent passing of, of JDF. It's a, it's a true tragic loss, um. But yeah, yeah. Um. I wanna. I there is a quote. That's a. It's a bit of a lengthy quote that I want to close this episode with. Um. This one, you know. Anytime I'm gonna share a quote from from, uh, someone. It's one that will that had resonated with me very closely personally. Um, and this one really cut to the core for me, especially as of late, because I've just been like I've been honestly conflicted lately about my current run with the podcast. Um with uh, just how I've been, uh, basically the way I've been creating, I've sort of lost direction on what I'm trying to accomplish. Cause I, I, I often have these reflective moments on the podcast where I ch- state what, what I claim are my goals. And I, you know, some, it, I feel like it's more more often than not that I'm just back in this cycle of repeating mistakes or repeating bad habits, um, repeating, you know, uh, negative thoughts. Uh, so I'm trying to, I guess right now I'm just trying to reclaim my stance and like, I don't want to say my purpose, but I mean, it is not my purpose like in life, but you know, the purpose of creating this type of content, why am I doing the podcast? Uh, why am I focusing so much on having content put on my YouTube channel? You know, like I really, I do see where a lot of my attention, my focus, my energy goes uh, creatively, you know, when I kind of step back and see like what, what it is I've created so far. And 
I always say like, I need to create more art, do this and that, Fo- you know, not focus less on podcasting, but try to just dial it back and then focus on the art, my craft more. And then yet again, I find myself putting a lot of energy out for the podcast when, you know, I have high expectations of myself. So again, like, you know, that's, that, that's always a fact, a factor, but I mean, real the, the reality of is it is that, you know, I don't really have a, a big audience right now <laughs> and building the audience will be a long journey. But if I'm being true, truth, truthful to myself, um, truly honest, brutally honest with myself, I know my solo podcasts don't do as well as when I have guests. But I wanted to, I wanted to do more of these because I don't know. I just like to 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 rant about stuff that pique my interest, and I'd rather do that alone than kind of put it on, uh, you know, my guests. Because I feel like I don't know. I have like I I, I have these weird feelings where like I don't want to just talk about the stuff that interests me. Like when I have the guest on. I want it to be as pure, authentic. Like I want to, I want, I want to be there for like for them, you know, like, like I want to really help promote them, but also get to know them, you know, build a friendship, a camaraderie. But, um, I know that does, that does a little better than when I do my solo podcasts. And I guess like that reality is really kind of shaking me up and then just other other stuff that's happening uh, around me. So, yeah, this quote right here, because I've been, I'm, I've been so thoughtful in the fact that like there's so much is going on in my head, and there are mo- and there are moments in my day to day where I do kind of sit down, uh, where I'm just reeling all these thoughts in my head. And a lot of those things are what um, assists me on pursuing the rest of my day. Um, So this quote right here, just it really, again, it really cut to the core. And um, yeah, if if this one, if this one hits you like it hit me, Feel free to leave a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts on this quote. Uh, It is by Jerry Saltz from his book, How to Be an Artist. And he says, your artist's mind is always working even when you think it's idling. In in the studio, hold on, let me restart that. It was a little sloppy. (laughs) Your artist's mind is always working. Even when you think it's idling in the studio, even doing nothing can be a form of working. This is also true when you're out walking, traveling, worrying, staying awake all night, whatever. All these things will be part of your work. Even when you seem to be going nowhere, things are happening. You are your method. Your life as part of your work. A bad day is a good day, the painter Stanley Whitney said, because a bad day is when you're trying to take it to a different level. And that, my friend, is it's heavy. Again, it's heavy for me because I'm like going through, I'm going through a lot of what this gentleman has has said in his quote. And again, if this one, if you resonate with, with that quote, please, please leave a comment. And um, yeah, I would love to just hear your, in, your, your thoughts on that. Um. Now, if everything goes accordingly, 
this will be out just days before Thanksgiving. So to just try to leave on a more positive note, please stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy your turkey day with your friends and family. Uh, enjoy all the food. And I hope you you regret it afterwards and feel that itis and get the food coma. And then that will motivate you to go exercise and get back into shape and survive the cold winters that is ahead of us. <laughs> that went on a weird direction. No, but honestly, seriously, I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving with your loved ones. And I hope to see you back tuning into the Rated G podcast. So until then, again, stay safe, stay healthy. I will catch you on the next one. Peace out, everyone. Hey.